In this video we're going to be discussing how to connect to a remote networked computer using Secure Shell or SSH. This command should be available on nearly any Linux machine. Uh, it's usually installed by default. This command should work on Mac OS and if you're running Windows 10 and you've installed WSL or Windows Subsystem for Linux you'll have access to Linux commands natively even though you're running the operating system Windows 10. So I highly recommend that if you're running Windows. So this command can work in uh, the three main uh, operating systems. So let's start out by opening up a terminal shell and running a couple commands locally. So if I run hostname, that gives me the name of my local computer. My local computer is running Ubuntu Linux. And if I type who am I, that gives me the username of my local machine. Now what we want to do is connect to a remote machine over the network and be able to type terminal commands that execute on that machine and the results will be sent back to us. Okay, so that's the point of SSH. So in order to connect to this machine, we're going to need to know a little bit of information about it. So we're connecting to the CS server at Indiana State University. It's running Slackware Linux. Um, we need to know the host name of the machine we're connecting to and someone should have given you an account and a password already. So assuming you have all that information, all you need to do to connect to that machine is run SSH, the username you want to connect to, so for demonstration purposes, that's CS10100, then you type the at symbol, and then the host name, cs.indstate.edu. That's the host name for the CS server. Uh, we press enter, and we'll be prompted for a password. So as you type in the characters of the password, you'll notice there are no placeholder characters showing up. The keystrokes are still registering, so that's fine. Don't worry about it. Just type in the password and press enter, and you'll see you have logged in. On the CS server, every time you log in, it generates a random fortune or a random message uh, that changes every single time. And if you have not run the change finger command, it automatically runs that for you. The change finger command allows you to type in your real name. That way we can associate uh, usernames with the real person. Okay, So the CS server automatically runs that for you if you haven't run it before. And that's why we see this notice here. And that's also why we're being prompted for a password again, even though we just entered it to log in. So we have to type in the same password again. And now we're running uh, change finger command. So we type in our full name press enter and you can leave the rest of the fields blank. All right, now you see we're at the CS server command prompt and you see that's different than my local command prompt. Now as I type in a command hostname, we see it's no longer the name of my local machine, it's the name of the CS server. And that's because when I type in this command, that command is being sent to the CS server, the command is executing on that machine and then the results are sent back to my local terminal for display. All right, if I type who am I, this is what user I am on the, the remote machine. All right, so now I need to type password, P-A-S-S-W-D. That's gonna change my password to something more memorable. So the old password is what I got from the network administrator. And the new password, and it needs to be something secure. So make sure uh, it's more than eight characters long. Use upper and lowercase letters. Uh, a numeral and a special character and spaces are included in that as well. So type in something you can remember. Type it again for verification and as you can see as I type this in again there's no placeholder characters. Alright so we successfully changed our password. So now just to double check to make sure the change finger command worked you might have to run this manually type in password and this is the new password and we see it's been set so I can just press enter and cycle through so now if I've concluded all of my work on the remote machine I can exit my session and I can do that just by typing the exit command and now we see we've returned back to my my local command prompt and I can verify that by saying hostname and we see that's more back to my my local machine all right and I can type exit again and that'll close the terminal so that's all you need to know on how to connect to a remote machine using SSH